Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 74-year-old male with complaints of chronic wrist pain, also some swelling. They're worried that he had a ganglion cyst because he could feel something over the uh, back of the wrist, and so they did the MRI really to look at the ganglion cyst possibly, and we see that the patient has some abnormalities. This is a coronal T1-weighted sequence. We can see that there is one striking finding is that the scaphalunate interspace is widened. This is the scaphoid bone lunate bone and the scaphalunate ligament which holds these together is completely torn allowing this interspace to be widened and also the capitate bone which is right here is migrating proximally into that widened interspace. There's some associated findings the scaphoid bone here has this chronic erosion some darkness here and the volume is down a little bit so this is eroding and also there's complete loss of joint spacing between the radius and the scaphoid bone here. So this is a scaphalunate ligament tear with proximal migration, and this is starting to erode and collapse. This is developing slacris, S-L-A-C, scaphalunate advance collapse, which is a consequence of the abnormal mechanics here. And there's another finding here. They were worried about a ganglion cyst. We see something over here that is not quite right. If we put up a fluid sequence, we'll see here this gradient echo view. There's a fluid collection, and it looks like there's an tendon that goes through here. This is the extensor pollicis longus tendon. You can see it making its loop around, surrounded by fluid. We see it going across these other two. Here's one here. Here's one here. This is the extensor carpo radialis longus and brevis tendons. It looks like the fluid is surrounding those. Put up another view. Here we can see that the fluid comes all the way here from the wrist, surrounding these. Um, extensor tendons. It looks like a bad tenus endivitis rather than a ganglion cyst like they thought clinically. So we'll put up axial images to see if that's true. Here we have the axial short axis images. We see the big fluid collections surrounding these. So if we get to the level of the distal radius, we see these two here, the extensor carpo radialis longus and brevis, and then here's the extensor pollicis longus. And we see these fluid collections surrounding the longest extensor pollicis longus, and this is the uh, extensor carpo radialis brevis. Both these tendon sheaths are severely distended. So it looks like a tenus synovitis. Do not see a ganglion cyst. Here's that widened scaphalunate interspace. This is just one quick look at the scaphalunate angle. This is that big fluid collection here along the back. So this is the lunate bone here. It looks like a cup, and it's angled backwards, a little bit of a dorsal uh, tilt. So the cup, instead of poking straight up compared to the radius, is angled backwards. Now we find this angle, and the angle of the long axis of the scaphoid bone here. So this is almost horizontal, and this is um, a little bit posterior to vertical. So this angle is about 90 degrees here, maybe more than 90 degrees. So this angle between the lunate bone and scaphoid should be 30 to 60 degrees. So this is way off, and this goes along with uh, dorsal intercalated uh, segmental instability. And that ligamentous instability allows for this abnormal angulation to occur. So I always measure the long axis of that, and find the angle here, the long or the long axis of the capitate. I'm sorry, lunate bone there and the angle should be between 30 and 60 degrees. If it's over that, think about dorsal or intercalated segmental instability. The patient also has some arthritis, uh, osteoarthritis, and some other findings. But those are the main things, and uh, thank you very much.